On August 23, 1954, a behemoth lumbered onto the runway at Lockheed's plant in Burbank, California. Four Allison T-56A1A turboprop engines, delivering 3,750 horsepower each, moved the plane's hulking mass in preparation for its first flight. This moment was the culmination of three years of work, creating the perfect transport for airlifting troops and gear into war zones. And the resulting plane would change the U.S. Armed Forces forever. This is the C-130 Hercules. The C-130's purpose can be seen in its dimensions. A team led by Lockheed Aeronautical Engineer Willis Hawkins, who later designed the M1 Abrams tank, determined the size of the Hercules cargo hold simply by drawing a circle around the biggest piece of equipment the Army needed to airlift, a tank. Because tanks are usually transported by rail, the team made the fuselage the same length as a railroad boxcar. And like a boxcar, the C-130 was meant to haul. After its successful first flight, production began in earnest in Marietta, Georgia, where the Herc continues to enjoy the longest continuous military aircraft production run in history. The plane has gone on to serve 70 countries and be produced in more than 70 different variants. Although the C might stand for cargo, the C-130 is a true jack of all trades, with its ability to operate as an airlifter, gunship, ambulance, TV broadcast system, drone launcher, even an air show performer as the Blue Angels famed Fat Albert. In Vietnam, the C-130A would prove indispensable, delivering cargo and weapons on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, hauling aircraft parts, dropping leaflets, once even clearing helicopter landing zones by dropping a pair of 10,000-pound bombs. Throughout the Cold War, several C-130 variants would provide much-needed reconnaissance on the Soviet Union and China's nuclear programs, while also participating in psychological warfare campaigns as a prelude to both the Persian Gulf War and the Iraq War. American C-130s have been flying in supplies for Chambliss forces at a rate of two or three plane loads each day. The American effort is strictly non-combatant, but in a country of vast distances and poor communications, their air support proves invaluable. While the C-130 has been used to facilitate combat operations, its wings have always saved lives as well. It's been a central figure in hostage rescue missions and has also been the first responder to natural disasters like Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the Haiti earthquake in 2010, and the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011. Despite its service record spanning more than half a century, the C-130 isn't even close to calling it quits. In mid-2020, the Air Force sent its AC-130U spooky gunship to the boneyard, only to make way for the AC-130J Ghost Rider, the service's latest and greatest gunship. Like other C-130Js, the Ghost Rider enjoys one-third better range, 15% better fuel efficiency, and 25% more thrust than legacy models, thanks to its six-blade Dowdy propellers and Rolls-Royce AE2100 turboprop engines. Forthcoming features, from a digital heads-up display to optional carbon brakes and next-gen radar, will make the AC-130J better than ever. Along with its 30mm cannon and 105mm howitzer, the AC-130J could also wield the first offensive laser weapon seen on an American aircraft. If development and funding go as planned, this 60-kilowatt laser will give U.S. commanders a non-lethal option for taking out an adversary. Almost 70 years after its first flight, the C-130 remains the Air Force's do-anything aircraft, and when the future of aviation tech is ready for the battlefield, the Herc will be the one to deliver it.